That's why I got you. Doing. Uh, people are still talking about Live Aid. What, what is it about the event that makes it so special? Um, well, Live Aid was not just the biggest um, uh, rock concert, but it was the biggest shared experience in human history, I think. And um, I think it was a very special. I wasn't actually in the country at the time, so I was in Africa, but, but it was very special because it was the. Um, I think it was the one time really when people felt they could make a difference in that way, that there was, you know, some sort of um, arcing of interest between the first world and the third world, mm. and I don't think it ever happened before, and I don't think it's really ever happened since. Mm. Now, a lot of other things have flowed from it, like sure. comic relief from children in Eve and so on. Yeah, do you, do you genuinely think it made a difference? Well, it made a difference in as much as, it made a difference on two, on two levels, I think. First of all, it actually empowered people. People really felt that, you know, what was happening in the third world wasn't just their responsibility, but they actually could do something about it. Yeah. That was the first thing. And the second thing was, actually, you know, for all the arguments about aid and, and, and development in, in Africa, it saved a hell of a lot of lives. Mm. You know, I mean, certainly when I was there first, the, the thought was it was going to be three million people who would die. Mm. And in the event, it was fewer than a million. Right. So, you know, it wasn't just Live Aid, but it was other things as well. Yeah. But, you know, a couple of million people's lives were saved, and that, I think, is a once and for all game, don't you? Mm, absolutely, yeah. Okay, thanks very much for talking to us. I just been. I had a sore back, and that was sort of it, you know. Um, yeah, I didn't really get it until I walked out on stage with my band, you know. Mm. And uh, I didn't sort of get the romance or the bigness of it. I was on doing this organizational thing in my head, and I just was nervous um, when it started, like when I left the house, and tired. And, uh, and then when I was there, I was just caught up in it. And then walking on stage, sort of, that sort of freaked me out a bit. Because mm. I just didn't think it was so big. It's only when you walked out there. And I never saw it, you know, I never saw Live Aid. So mm. this will be interesting for me, you know? Right. This is the first time you've seen it since in, in 20 years? Well, I didn't even see it 20 years ago, you know, because <laughs> I was running around, you know. So uh, this is the first time I've ever seen it, you know. Yeah, yeah. It's, 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 uh, they say it's the day that um, changed, when music changed the world. Um, why, is, why was it so important? Well, you've got to go back 30 years, and at, at the time, there were 20 years, there was 30 million people um, uh, affected by hunger, and a good proportion of those were in famine conditions, so they were just about to die. And... Um, 
what Live Aid did, uh, kind of unknowingly, was address the sort of world constituency, and that sort of hadn't have been done before. Um, uh, you know, global satellites addressing a, 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 a human issue to the rest of the world and using the lingua franca of the planet, which was not English, but it was pop music. Mm. And, uh, I mean, you've got to again go back, mobile phones were just about around, the common form of communication was telex, yeah. um, so it was a different time and suddenly something else happened. Mm. And. Uh, Pete Townsend a couple of months ago said to Michael Moore, you're going to have to do a lot to convince me that a man with a camera is more powerful than a man with a guitar. Mm. And I remember reading that, and, you know, this was a bunch of tunes. And what it did was take something that was nowhere on the political agenda, nowhere, uh, the poor and the hungry, and put it right at the top, where, mm. of course, it still is, and in fact is the determining consideration of Britain's G8 next year and mm. so that's what this is tonight it's mm. the starting pistol for the political year of 2005 where Britain is chair of the G8 and president of the EU yeah. so to raise the lobby for a new generation to push yeah. can an event like this happen again do you think will there be a live aid too it could happen again I'm not sure it would have the impact because live aid happens every day it's called MTV or it's called you know whatever mm. like my lot can choose six music programs and see everybody all the time at the time, there was no music television, and there wasn't that sort of thing. Would it have the, I mean, you know, global communications are absolutely normal. Like, you know, a journalist pops up with a video phone anywhere in the planet. Mm -hmm. So that romance of connecting yourself once again yeah. uh, may not be there. Um, but, you know, when, we, when re Band Aid is re-recorded next week, that becomes the emotional launch pad to the year, as I said. So at that point, anything becomes possible again. Okay, well, thanks very much. Thank you. Carl, I'm just GMTV. Nice uh, to meet you. GMTV. Oh, yeah. um, can you just tell us, you must be immensely proud, but still quite sad that 20 years after you did Live Aid, you still happened to raise money for countries in Africa who are still suffering. Well, I was never proud, to be honest with you. You know, I was just knackered by the whole thing. And you know, so, and I didn't think that 20 years on, I'd still be, that I'd still be doing it. But as I said, why I never wanted it shown again, just the one off, is because I said at the time it would be more powerful in memory. And so 20 years on, yes it is. And um, this is less to do, though that's important, I mean, 50% of Africa is under 15. And those children go to bed hungry every night. Hunger still kills more in Africa than AIDS, malaria, TB or polio combined, and war. So every day and every night hunger is just a commonplace it's, I just came back from Africa last night and it's just something that's there if you pass people all the time they'll go like that and you know give me some, or like that give me some, you know and no child no child no person should go to bed hungry tonight it is ridiculous it is ridiculous there is no single reason and what Live Aid did 20 years ago was make that plain and push it at the top of the political agenda. What is preposterous is that political agenda has not dealt with that issue. And in 2005, it's Britain's chance. That's why tonight and next Saturday with Band Aid is important. Blair is president of the G8, he's president of the EU. It's time now to move the torch along to another crowd of people and just say, we reject that out of hand that any person in our world should go to bed hungry. In a world where we produce surplus of everything, that is a ridiculous proposition. We remember the quote that got people off their chairs, kept them out of the pubs and got them ringing in and donating 20 years ago. 20 years on, it's, there's a whole new generation, but the generation that were there at the time have got the opportunity to put their money where their mouth is once again. What would you say to those people who are thinking, yeah, but we donated that time and we can't keep on doing it? And it's just another, it's just a ploy, it's a Christmas DVD, it's not really about the issue anymore. What would you say to those people at home? Well, it, you know, that's a sort of journalist question because I don't think anybody, you know, if they think that much into it, fantastic. Um, being be being hungry is not a ploy. Being hungry is a condition of life. Dying of want in a world of surplus is not only morally repulsive, it's intellectually absurd. So what was proven 20 years ago with a clutch full of songs and a couple of band-aids is that those people don't have to go hungry. That... Um, the world changes on the turn of a guitar screw, you know. Um, that's pathetic. 
that pop singers and the people who, who listen to music and buy records can determine somebody's life is pathetic. That's the job of politicians. And um, what this gives is an opportunity for the generation who did change the world 20 years ago and the new generation around now, the change to ram that home. It's taken 20 years to get it from being an issue of charity to one of justice, and now it's this crowd's turn. And I don't believe there's a single person looking at your programme who thinks that a child or an adult should go to bed hungry tonight. I just don't believe that's there. We've got 7 million viewers who will be watching this tomorrow. What's your message to them today with that camera? Um, well, next Saturday we re-record Band-Aid, um, with, again, the greatest music stars and the most popular ones in the UK. And they're, they're doing it for a reason. And if you buy it, um, whatever you think of the song, it's an OK song. Um, but one, you're buying a little piece of pop history. Two, it's a cheap Christmas present. And nobody can say, get a cheap miser, you know, but they have to say, oh, great, thanks. So what you've got to do is buy it to give someone a present, and they, they give you one back in return. So what happened 20 years ago is you get people going in and buying 30 of them and giving 29 back. I want that to happen again. I can guarantee you that the money, and I've just come from um, Gordon Brown's office, as you do, having tea with him this afternoon, and he's just handed us back the tax on the record, the VAT. So if we get to a certain, if we can get to number one throughout Christmas, then we're going to get an awful lot of money. Um, of course, that will, like 20 years ago, go directly um, to people who need it. But most importantly, when you buy the record, you're buying into a club that's lasted for 20 years that forced politicians to pay attention to what we said. And if you buy it this year, you'll feel good. You get a decent record, you get a little bit of pop history, but you will force these people who can rarely hear you if indeed they're ever listening to pay serious attention to what you're saying. Thank you very much. Okay. Thanks a lot. Now we're going to BBC, Bob. How are you? Hi. Um, first of all, give us your reaction to this uh, bit of news we've just had that the uh, Treasury are going to refund. Hang on, they just moving me. They're going to refund the bat on the DVD and the new single. Uh, yeah, I was with him about um, an hour ago um, when he told us that was what they were going to do. And uh, for, I forgot to be honest, which I forgot to ask. And um, so that's the difference between now and 20 years ago. I had a terrible sort of row with Thatcher about it. But they didn't get the plot 20 years ago. And I guess the success of Live Aid is evident in the gesture of the government. You know, they just thought, aye, aye, we don't want to get into that one again. But also, I think it's the change in 20 years. Um, Band Aid almost is a sort of unique idea, in, in, as much as the government will not take a penny off it. Um, that it goes directly to the people who require it. The sickening thing is, of course, 20 years on, that um, there are still uh, too many people going to bed hungry tonight. And I just got back from Africa last night, and uh, more people die of hunger every day in Africa than war, AIDS polio and TB combined. Now still, in a world of surplus, that that should happen is not... Threatening with a call from you. Did he? I haven't spoken to him yet. Um, well, I don't know if, it, well, I don't know if that's how it works. I hope not. Um, I think I can put it in perspective. I can understand people sort of going, oh God, you know, or oh, I did this or I do that. It's kind of over and above them. You know, the song was, in my opinion, never amazing in the first place. But every Christmas along they come and sing Silent Night and they sing Come All Ye Faithful and the next minute they burst into, you know, this Christmas time and you kind of think, wow, I wrote that, you know, when you don't actually think, you just think, you just they bugger off and go away. But it's sort of entered and the kids who sing those things think it was written 200 years ago, like Silent Night or something. So it's just entered the culture. Um, it's a time. Katie! Katie! Yeah, good thing. So, um, oh, well, um, obviously this is Live Aid and, uh, you know, I'm really excited to be you know, involved with the single which is being recorded next week right. and um, I've actually worked with 
um, Save the Children before and um, they told me about the project and I got very excited about the fact that they were doing the single and it's excellent that they're releasing Live Aid for DVD and I'm just excited to be here. So can you tell us anything about the single and what, like, who's involved and what, you know, what to expect and how it's um, going to differ from the first one? I think a lot of it, I mean to be honest a lot of it, you know, we don't know ourselves, the artists, I mean and a lot of it's probably a nice little secret that's being kept and I think you just have to wait and see. Mm. Why is it important to keep doing these sort of projects? Do you think? Oh, I think, um, you know, obviously, I think when in 1984, when the first single came out, it was such a huge step in in way of showing how music can, you know, change the world and, you know, really help Ethiopia out. Mm. But um, I think people don't kind of realise that, even though it raised a lot of money, it didn't make, you know, that much of a difference mm. in the country. It's still in a lot of trouble. And um, I think that's what, obviously, they're trying to do now. They're trying to raise more money and, and more awareness. I think that's the most important thing to raise awareness about the country. And, you know, it's important to, to be aware of what's going on around the world and realise that that money, I guess, didn't, you know, finish everything off. You need to you need to continue to, to make money for poor for, for countries. So what, what was going on with you at the moment, other than this uh, Band Day 20? And, uh, oh, um, at the moment, actually, I'm just recording the next next album. Right. How's that coming out? It's good. Um, we started writing for it, which is really exciting. Yeah. And, um, yeah, we're just in the middle of recording. Yeah, have you felt that second album pressure yet? Yeah, you know, that everybody talks um, about. Well, obviously there's a pressure commercially, but um, you know, I, I do feel I've moved on a lot from the first album. And I, you know, I think I can make a better record musically speaking. Whether that matches the commercial success is, you know, up to fame. Yeah. Well, good luck with that. Thanks Thank you very, very much. So 20 years on, what's your fondest memories of that day? Um, I think the actual moment of going on, which is such a mixture of sort of angst and excitement. I mean, incredible excitement. I think it's a, yeah, just the moment of going on and making contact with that crowd. Yeah. Mm, it was an, immo an immense crowd there, wasn't it? I mean, yeah. could, can you imagine there being a live A2 in there? If there was, would it have as much impact? To say, yes, I guess it could be done again. You'd need another Bob Geldof, you know, I don't think he's going to do another one. I wouldn't blame him, you know, but, um, I mean, Bob was so exceptional. It's only because of him that it happened, you know, it couldn't have been done by committee. It had to be Bob Geldof. It had to be a man with that amount of courage and sheer audacity uh, to pull it off. Yeah. And, and, what, and do you think it actually made a difference? Very hard for me to say. I mean, I only know from kind of hearsay in a way. I know that Bob actually went out there and make sure, made sure that the trucks got there. I also know that there was still a lot of corruption, you know, and it's very hard to, to see through all that. But I'm sure it made some difference, yeah. yeah. And I guess what it did was make a big difference to the attitude of the world. Mm. I mean, attitude is one thing, you know, which led to more awareness of, of, of similar causes, you know, perhaps. I mean, there's still not enough, but at least some. Mm. Okay, well, great. Well, have a nice evening. I hope you enjoy it the second time around. <laughs> yeah, I haven't actually seen it since the night. I mean, I've seen odd little tiny snippets, yeah. but I'm really very interested to see what it looks like. Yeah, 20 years on looking back at yourself must yeah. be quite yeah. awkward. <laughs> it's weird. I mean, but to me, like, the moon landing seems like yesterday. You know, it seems like yeah. modern to me, so so does this. <laughs> great, well, enjoy it. Thanks very great. much. Cheers. Cheers. All that money, doing the job, you know, put that into, you know, when I had to go and, 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 and do what was necessary. So, um, it's, um, it's been a, an interesting 20 years. What, was, what started out as a six month project has turned into this. How did, you get, how did you get involved in it in the first place and why are you still involved in it now? As you say it's taken you and Bob once again to do it all over. Did you not feel like saying, listen, it's, t it's 20 years on, it's a different generation's battle now, surely? 
it's a bit of a celebration of what happened 20 years ago. It's not like it's not like you're back on the on your bike and, and having to pedal up that hill again. You know, it's it's an ongoing thing. You know, without the the, the new recording of the Band Aid thing being what it is, it's just a Christmas song. It comes out every Christmas. Every time it's played on the radio, it generates money and will do long after Bob and I are well gone. You know, we 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 dust. So that stuff will constantly happen. It will just regenerate forever. So um, no, it's not. It's not a bad thing. I think it's a good thing. You know, we, we don't have to re-record the song, but I think we want to give ourselves a clap in the back as well as focus attention on the problems still in Africa. You know. And on this in this DVD in particular, why should people buy this? Oh well, why shouldn't you? Is that it was the greatest rock concert ever. You know, until somebody comes along and does something better. It was a magnificent uh, achievement, not just from, not from the artists, the artists, we're, we're all old tarts, you know, we all love going out and performing, we love doing what we do, that's why we do it, so the artist, to walk on and do 18 minutes, you know, out of your life to go and sing your songs in front of, you know, millions of people, it's not a hardship, really. The amazing thing was the fact it worked. You know, uh, the, 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 the technical aspects of it, the, the, the crews, the lighting guys pulling in live feeds from all over the world to make this thing happen. It worked brilliantly. You know, I'm about to see it again and relive it. Brilliant, that's great. Can I just give you a card as well? Sure. We would love it if you could come in the programme tomorrow. I know that's a big ask at 6 o'clock in the morning. But I'll, yes. I'll give you the card and just leave it Thank there. you. <laughs> Thank Hello. you. Which can we do with you? Please give me the Oh, sorry. Yeah. Oh, did you not? Right, okay. Well, we speak to you. Okay, how are you doing? I'm Adam. How are you doing? It's nice to meet you. So, um, it's been 20 years since Live Aid. What's some of your lasting memories from that day? Um, uh, I had here. Um, it was sunny. <laughs> Um, it was a fantastic day, I have to say. The only way the artist could get into uh, the Wembley Stadium was by helicopter. And we actually flew over um, this empty stadium. We could look down and see it in this empty stadium with all these people, millions, thousands of people, all standing around the stadium, all waiting to come in. That was huge to me. The other thing that was amazing was um, I knew Phil Collins was going to go out and do the concert on either side of the Atlantic, which is big enough. Yeah. But then I overheard Harvey Goldsmith, uh, one of the promoters of the concert, talking about losing the shuttle. Right. And I said, what shuttle? He said, you know, the shuttle. Uh, and one of the astronauts in the shuttle was going to announce one of the bands. And it doesn't get any bigger than that, you know, that's big. Yeah. Do you think there could be another concert that, you know, that's similar to it? So, so I'd like to think so. Uh, the, the fact is that it, 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 if you're celebrating 20 years since mm. Live Aid, 20 years next year, there hasn't been a concert that big. No. Um, so I'd like to think that, you know, the world's a big enough place for something like that to happen, yeah. but it hasn't happened yet. The baton's there to be picked up from Bob and I and just run with it and for somebody new to come and take it mm. and go and make the thing happen. Can we do that again? That's the part, I'll ask you now. You just find holding on for a few minutes. As long as the fire's not across the road, I think we should be alright. Try again. Did you get to see the footage? Did you see any of the footage after? The only, th the only thing I've seen um, since the concert, um, I think they did something on the fifth anniversary or the tenth anniversary or something, and I saw bits of it. Yeah. But then they sent me, um, when they were putting this together, um, they sent me the, the big finale, the big sing-along from the UK end, and they said, who are these people? And I sat there and I, I picked out all the artists that I knew. Of course, anybody backstage would have wanted to be on stage. So they all jumped up and all hugged David Bowie and Paul McCartney and you know Bob and whoever. Mm. And, you know, and why not? Mm. You know, so they seized the moment. And I have no idea who half, the, half those people are. But again, I'll see them again tonight. Yeah, well, I've, 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 they've sent through some clips to the office. It does give you shiv the shivers up the spine. So to actually be on the stage there must be sort of unimaginable. Um, and, and, well, it's very odd. Uh, it was very scary, and I kept walking backwards, you know, um, as people pushed forward to get to the microphone. I, I took a couple of steps. And you can see that on the video, and, and Bob grabs me and pulls me forward and sticks a mic in my face and makes me sing some of the song. Because I, I, I didn't want to steal the moment. I wanted the other people to do their bit. I'd been part of it for six months at that point, you know, from writing the song all the way through to that. And it wasn't, you know, 
just about that. I was quite happy standing in the crowd. Yeah. And of course, still involved now. I mean, you know, what, what's going on with uh, Band Aid 20? What's, uh, is there anything you can tell us about it? Well, it's looking, it's looking very good. It's a very good lineup of God. Um, I'm not producing the record, I'm executive producer, which means that the first time round I produced the record and got none of the credit. And this time round I'll be executive producer, someone else does all the work, and hopefully I'll get all the credit, which is fantastic. Um, so it's it's looking great. We've got Coldplay and Travis, and uh, uh, we've got Jamelia. Uh, you know, it's 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 a fantastic. It's like Q Magazine's ultimate lineup. Yeah. It's really cool. It's very good. Was it easy to get these people on board? Yeah. When, the first thing that happens when you do a, a charity concert, a charity event, uh, when you approach um, an artist management or record company, is they ask you who else is doing it. Then they can gauge whether their artist is, you know. We had Fran and Chris Martin from Coldplay uh, on board instantly. So we had we had you know Travis and Coldplay. Mm. That's two of the biggest bands in the UK right now. Yeah. Once you get that, everything else falls into place. They didn't ask who else was doing it. It didn't matter. Yeah. And I suppose you've got to put a modern twist in it. Is there anything, any sort of hints that you can give us on what you're aiming to achieve? Yeah. Well, like the last record, I won't be singing on it, and neither will Bob. Thank God. <laughs> Excellent. Well, good luck with that. It's nice to talk to you. All right, Thanks, thanks a lot. Enjoy the conversation. Cheers. Thanks. 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 Who is this man? So, 20 years old. Yes. <laughs> Does it seem like 20 years ago? Uh, no, it doesn't seem, well, I suppose it will seem like 20 years ago when I see it now. No, I mean, it's. I think it's an event that's still rippling yeah. and has still changed people's perspectives. I think it was an amazing day because it was a really a feeling of great democracy for people. When they, when they would phone up and gave their money that day, they felt that they were proving they had a conscience, especially to Margaret Thatcher. Yeah. Um, and, and I think they were feeling that they were changing something that uh, above and beyond government. And, and I thought that was, that's what made it so powerful. Mm, what were some, some of your fondest memories from that day? Well, I mean, just being on, on the same stage as so many great acts, on that sort of level playing field, and walking out on stage in, in front of an audience that, that all felt <coughs> amazed about being there that day. So they were all on your side. It was an amazing party. I mean, the irony is it was a great tragedy that we were playing for, but um, everyone felt very euphoric that day. And I think that was probably important to make people feel excited so they could then pay the money. Yeah, can you imagine there being another concert like I, Live Aid, I, Live Aid 2? Or? I don't think there will be now, because what you have to remember about this moment in time is every British band was successful in every country in the world, and that just isn't the case right now. Mm. Uh, so I think the power of British music was extraordinary in the mid '80s, yeah. and, and I think that's why you know it's such a major event. It is amazing, actually. I've got some clips at work. When you look back at the amount of bands that were there at the time and how big that they actually were. Yeah, yeah. It was, I mean, it was a good time for British music, absolutely. In fact, I mean, the, Brit the bands that were on, in the British bands that were on, were probably a, a lot bigger than the American bands that played that day. Mm. Absolutely. Well, I hope you enjoyed this Thanks evening. a lot. Thanks. Say the same thing, shall I? Well, similar, similar. Are you using your light? Lights not working. Okay, cool. We're there. Tell me what it was like. It was it was exhilarating. I mean, you knew you were doing something for a for a cause that was very sad and tragic, but nevertheless, it was very euphoric. I mean, the the crowd was was so intense that day, and you knew that there were billions of people watching it all over the world and you were on this level playing field with some of the greatest bands and bands that I grew up with you know so it was nerve-wracking but at the same time exhilarating. Did you have any idea? <laughs> 